Hey everyone and welcome back. So in this video we're going to try to finish off the player C++ class. So we've already seen how to declare and then set up our cube ready for use in a blueprint class. So if we go back and open our CR pawn, if you don't already have this open from previously, what we want to do is carry on adding the other U properties down here. So that's going to be our spring arm component and our camera class. So to do this we need to make sure that we're in the header file. So this time we're going to start from top to bottom and we're going to add our U property first of all. And in fact, we need exactly the same U property. So we need it to be visible anywhere and we might need to access it in Blueprint. So we'll make it Blueprint read only. The next class type that we want though is going to be our spring arm. So we want the U spring arm component. Again, we want to make this a pointer. And when we use a pointer, that's the, uh, the asterisk here. And that basically means that we're not getting all of the information from the class. We're not creating a whole new instance of the U spring arm class. We are just pointing to its reference in memory. So we're saying we want this thing to exist and we want the spring arm, or we're just gonna call this spring arm. Okay, so that's our spring arm ready to implement later. And then likewise, we're gonna get another U property and this is going to be our U camera component. So we want the, uh, the class type of U camera component uh, again, this is a pointer, and we're just going to call this one camera. Now, the only difference here is we're going to go back to the beginning of this, and we're going to give this a forward declaration of class. Basically, we use this whenever we need to reference a class that the class that we are in doesn't know about. So, because we're using the hash include up here core minimal, it means that we have the very base amount of information to other classes and references that we need. This keeps the compilation time down. It's the new include what you use system, which is a lot cleaner and more efficient than what Unreal was doing previously. Uh, but it does mean that uh, we're, we're lucky that uh, this class does know what a use static mesh component is, and it does know what a spring arm component is. But by default, it wouldn't know what a camera component is. So what we do is we forward declare this as class. So we can use this whenever we don't need to access something directly. And another way that we can do this is we could also, underneath the includes, we could just say class and you, uh, you camera component up here. Now, the main difference is, is this will be quite useful if we know that we're making three or four different cameras. And rather than putting class in front of all of them, we can then just remove this and we'll know from the top of the, the file what the U camera component is. But because we're only making one of them, we can just include this once down here and it keeps the top of our header file a little bit tidier. Now, whilst we're making the properties up here, we may as well add in the other properties, that, the other variables that we know that we need, and they are the ones which are controlling movement. So we're going to create another U property. This one's going to have some slightly different specifiers. So we want this one to be editable anywhere, which is which just comes under the edit anywhere specifier. And I'll give this one its own category of floats. So all floats are going to go into the float category. And to declare this, we just say float and give it a name. So the first one we want is the forward force that we were using previously. I'm going to copy all of this and paste this underneath. You can just come down and tab this over and change the second one to be called side force. And remember, we're just using the references we had in the blueprint class. So we've got the forward force, the side force, and we need to make these in a moment as well. So these are in fact going to be all of the U properties. So everything that we need to be exposed in blueprint we now have here. So I'm going to create a comment and I'll just call this U properties just so we can see from a glance what all of these, where all of these are going to be nested. Okay, so if we jump back over to the CPP class, we can now actually populate all of the components that we've been making. And the first thing we want is the spring arm. So we'll get the spring arm we've just made. I'm going to do the same thing again. So the first thing we need to do is to create the spring arm. So similar to what we did with the cube, we need to say the spring arm equals, and then we need to create this. So remember, this is the create default sub object, not the create object. And just need to give it the argument of the type of class that it is. So it's a U spring arm component. And then again, we can finish this off by giving it some text, which will be the name. So we'll just call this one spring arm. And of course, we need to close this off with semicolons. And finally, we want to make sure that we actually attach this to something. So we're going to say that the spring arm is attached to the cube. And to do this, we use these symbols followed by setup attachment. And then we pass in the argument of what we want to attach this to. So we're going to attach this to the cube. And what we've done here, this is basically an accessor. So because we're going into a function or trying to find a variable of a different class, we need to use an accessor to get that. And there are a few different ones that you'll see. So we've just used this, which is if you're accessing something inside of a class that you're pointing to. And remember, we're pointing to this because we have a pointer down here then we use this accessor. If you have direct access to it, you may have seen this in other programming languages, you'll do something like spring arm dot. So this is another one. And then we also have this option, which we'll see around here. So inside of class, you already have knowledge about, you can use this accessor. So you'll see these used interchangeably. And um, again, 
I don't want to go into the very basics of C++ and uh, standard C++. There's a plethora of information on that over the internet. So if any of this is interesting and you want to find out more about it, then do feel free to Google that. This playlist, though, is going to be focused more on the Unreal-specific C++ because we're using kind of boilerplate C++, heavily modified for the Epic Unreal Engine. Okay, so that is our spring arm created and then attached to our cube. And the next thing we want is to create our camera. So we're going to do the same thing again. In fact, I'm just going to copy this and just shift tab that back over. Change the spring arm to be camera. Change the U spring arm component to be U camera component. And we'll change the spring arm name to be camera. So because we're doing the same thing, we wanted that again. And the rest of the syntax is correct. We just needed to change the argument being the camera. And again, we want to set the attachment of the camera to be attached to the spring arm. So we'll use our accessor, we'll set the attachment, so that's already down here, and we can say spring arm. Okay, so we've attached our camera. And the other thing, remember I said the other use of the constructor is that we can set the default values for our variables. So we've got our forward force, and we're going to set that to 2000, I think we're using in the blueprint. And side force, I'm going to set to be 5. This is slightly different for the C++ version. Now the final thing is that we also want to make sure that when this cube is, or this player pawn is in the scene, we want this to be the default go-to class to possess. So we just say auto possess player, and we'll say that that equals to an enumerator. So e auto receive input, which is this argument just here. And we just use the accessor and we'll get player zero. So the same we've done in the blueprint saying that the first player in the game is going to auto possess this pawn class. So again, with that done, we can compile this and we can make sure that all of this is showing correctly in our editor. So we'll just go back over to the editor. We'll hit compile from here because we're doing a lot of things from the constructor. This is important that we do the compile inside of the engine, like I mentioned previously. Okay, so that compile file, I probably had a mistype or something somewhere. So if we just hit the show log, that'll bring us over to our message log and we can have a look through to see what I've done wrong. Oh, I know what it's going to be. So it's saying that it doesn't know, it doesn't have, uh, SpringArm is not a member of ACR Pawn. So what that means is that in the C++ file, we haven't done any of our includes or declarations. So we're fine here. We've got the class include for our camera component, but we haven't done any of that in the C++ file. So over here, what we want to do is slightly different because we're actually accessing variables or functions from within these classes. We actually need to use a hash include rather than the forward declarations. So the forward declaration that we used here is generally faster, um, not just for us to type, but it's also a faster way of letting the compiler know that we need access to this class because it is a lighter version because it knows if we're using this that we don't need to access anything within the class. When we need to access something within the class we're going to do the hash include or the pound include and for the camera we want to go to the camera folder. So this is where the library is stored in the camera folder and then we want to get the camera component. And remember that I said that we can't access most C++ files because they're private. So we want the .h, the header of the camera component. So this is the actual camera class. So that now means that the class will know what this is. We also want to make sure that it is aware of the cube, which I think we want the hash include, we want the components class, and we want the primitive component. So that's going to be primitive component.h. And I'm just thinking if we've used anything else. I think that should be okay for now. Obviously, again, I've worked all this out ahead of time, so I know where these are. If you want to know where the, when you're missing a reference to something, you want to know where it is in the library. Using Visual Studio Code, the only way that we can really do this is to go to our good friend Google. And really, all we can do is, I find the best way to find this isn't through the documentation itself. The best results normally come from Google, which will take you to the right part of the documentation. So let's use the example that we want to know where the camera is located. Because the naming definition of U and then the class name is quite unique to Unreal, you can normally get away with just typing U camera component. Type that into Google. And the first thing you'll normally see is the documentation for the U camera component. For some reason, if you do this through the documentation search up here, I tend to find that takes you to answer pages and forum pages. Whereas if you do it directly through Google, it takes you to the page that you want. And what we need to find is at the bottom of this page, quite simple. You'll see that this looks familiar. We have our camera forward slash camera component dot H, which is exactly what we've used here. And basically all we need to do is the header file is located in runtime engine classes. And pretty much everything before classes and classes itself we can ignore, which is why we've just taken the camera and the camera component. And then just as a second example, we'll take the primitive components as well. So just Google this again, the U primitive component. Again, this will take you straight to the documentation, normally it's the first hit. And then down at the bottom, 
Same logic, we can ignore runtime, engine, and classes, and then that's how we get the result components forward slash primitive component dot h. So if that included, that's all we really need to do to get access to these classes, and I think that's all we need for these components. We'll just do another compile and check. Okay, so that still didn't work. Um, that may just be misspelling at this at this stage. So it's still talking about the spring. I'm, oh, I know what I've done. Okay, so what I've done is, um, should have been quite obvious here, I said that this already knew about this class, and that is wrong. So we need to forward declare the class u spring arm component as well. Uh, it is just the static mesh that this class will be aware of. That is like a very base class, so most classes won't understand this one. But the spring arm component isn't, so we need to include that. So hit save. We'll go back over, and we will try again. Generally, a lot of these are because uh, we're getting a lot of errors, but that's normally because it's gotten to a point in the class. It didn't understand one thing, and it kind of just gives up and assumes that pretty much everything else is wrong as well, like the syntax ahead of it and after it. Okay, so we now have the undefined uSpringArm component, and I think this is in the C++ class, so that means that we need to include this here as well. So I've got the camera, I've got the primitive, and just need to come back up and do another hash include. So this one for the SpringArm is in the game framework, and this is under the SpringArm component. So the other thing to notice is that obviously when we're referencing things inside of the class, we want the U ahead of these, so the U SpringArm, the U static mesh, because like I mentioned, these are Unreal classes, and this helps with the garbage collection and making sure that they get disposed of when at the end of runtime. When we're referencing them up here, we're referencing the actual name of the class as it's called. If we wanted to call our game mode that we've created, we would say CR game mode, uh, hash include CR game mode up here, which we'll be doing later in fact. Okay, so with that done, we can actually go back now and this should work. So we'll hit compile again. That's the only thing I can see uh, in relation to now is that it couldn't get the setup component. Yep, so that worked. So it couldn't get the functions afterwards because it didn't know what the class itself was. So if we close our original player, we'll go to our CR pawn, and we can now see we have our cube, our spring arm, and our camera component. So we have everything that we had previously, in fact. So what we can start doing is we can start setting up the variables and get everything back to how it was on the previous version of our blueprint. So what we had is our player cube, and the first thing we'll come up against as a problem is we don't have any static meshes. So to fix this, uh, we can actually just drag in the cube from the modes panel over here. If we right click on this and say convert cube to static mesh, this just saves us a step of importing things. Uh, we can go to our meshes folder, which it seems to think exists, but doesn't. So we'll add this to a meshes folder, and we now have our static mesh cube. So we can delete the one from the scene. We can go back into our pawn, and we can add in the cube. So we now have the visual representation of the cube, and that should be fine. We then want the spring arm, so I think the spring arm we had at a minus 20 degree, yeah, minus 20 degree rotation on the Y, so we're going to do that to this spring arm, and should have checked there. So we've got 500 on the arm length, and to make sure that this doesn't tumble around with us, we just want to remove all of these, and the camera was left exactly as it is now. And I remember the final thing we had for the collision of the pawn, we want to go down here, and we want to make sure that we clamp, uh, no, the constraints under the physics, wasn't it? Uh, we had the constraints on the physics of the player set to the Y and the Z, just because originally it was rolling around when it hit the floor. So we'll do the same, and that is now pretty much we're back where we were previously. Now there's one final thing I wanted to show, and this is kind of a, a personal preference thing. Some developers like to do a lot of things in C++, others prefer to do as much as possible in Blueprint. I like quite a healthy mix, but what you might see other people do is this, and I'm just going to paste a bunch of code in here to demonstrate. So Quite a handy shortcut for Visual Studio Code is Alt and Shift will let you line drag so we can get rid of a bunch of comments on all of the lines here and realign everything. Everything we've just done in Blueprint can be done in C++ obviously, so if we use our accessor and we can set the root component, we've already done that, but we can also set things like the relative rotation, the arm length, uh, whether we want the camera lag, which I forgot to do in fact, and the camera lag speed. All of this can be done in C++. Uh, now that's perfectly fine, and this gives you the default values, but I tend to not do this because they already have default values anyway. This isn't something which is required, which will create a bug or something if you don't do this. And generally, this is going to be overridden almost immediately because you might test this. And say we tested this at 400 and we decided 400 is too, too short, so we've gone for 500. If you're doing this in C++, you're going to have to come back in every time you want to change something and change it once here and then recompile and then play it and find out it doesn't work, and then go back in, change it, recompile, and so on. So this kind of seems a little bit frivolous, a, a bit pointless. We need to set these things up. These are absolute must-haves. We, we, we can only do this in C++. If we didn't do this, then we wouldn't see the spring arm, and it wouldn't attach to anything. 
But beyond that, everything's quite visual and is a lot faster to do in Blueprint. And that's really the power of Unreal, I think. I, I think using both of these in combination with each other are where you start using Unreal at its best. So now the alternative is that we come in here, uh, we press play, we think that 500 is too short, we go to 600, no recompilation, we press play, we think that's too short, and we can just keep going really quickly and really, really quickly iterating. So the other thing I, I noticed is that we didn't include the camera lag, so I'm just going to turn the camera lag back on, hit compile, and that is the class setup for now. So for the most part, in fact, if we go back to our main map, we go to our project settings as well, go to maps and modes, and under the game mode, we can set our default player to now be our CR pawn. Now we're not going to have any input or anything yet, we haven't done that, but we should have our CR pawn spawned. So we've got the first stage. We haven't enabled physics, so we just go back up and simulate physics. And this seems to be saying that we cannot simulate physics, which means that this probably doesn't have any collision. So if we go to the mesh, we'll double click and open this, go to collision, and we'll add a box simplified collision. We can see we get the green line now, so it now has a collider. And there we go, we can now enable physics, hit compile, and press play. So we now have our, our thing doing something. It, it drops into the world, it doesn't have any movement, but we now have our C++ class as our default pawn. So we're getting there. So with most of the content set up, uh, what I'm going to do, I'll leave this video here, and then in the next video, we're going to specify this to implementing the functions. This is all of the properties and the variables that we needed. So for the next video, we're going to look at adding the functionality, the input, and the movement to the player. As always, though, if you've enjoyed this or found the video useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the content coming from this channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.